Hello everyone and you're so much welcome to today's tutorial. I still remain your most wealthy shoe making made easy to do. Odruli Mojibala. I'm sure you'll be wondering what is all this that she's showing us. I'm just to give you, I'm just trying to actually give us an highlight of what we learn in our summer craft class. Of course, we learn 3D animation and this is one of the presentation of the kids. Now, in this particular month, we have has been so exciting and we have learned a lot when it comes to leather craft as well as graphics and 3d animation so in the month of september of course our weekend class is going to be basically based on how to create offer to increase your sales as well as whatsapp automation so don't miss it today i'm going to be teaching you how to create this beautiful flip-flop using an already made belt and of course our materials is going to be solely eva foam it's a slippers that can be worn at home see all right basically what i need for today's class is my insole now this is actually leather it just has this beautiful you know print or pattern right on top of it and then this is eva foam it has a thickness of four and then this is what I'm going to be using as my auto so this is actually very popular here in, in Abuja Nigeria we call it um Kano Nora actually is actually I think it's a it's a mixture of um, EVA foam and probably some rubber components because it's not literally as foamy as our EVA foam It's quite denser than our EVA foam so I'm going to be using this particular one as my sew you can see i've already cut it out like i said i have already prepared my in so this is leather i just placed it on the eva foam now i'm going to be making use of this my already made belt for this particular project and of course a strip of leather i'm also going to be using so let's go right into this and see how we are going to be doing the transformation you know of what we have right here all right so the first thing you want to first of all understand is the length you need from this particular point to this particular point now you can you'll find out that this is about five and a half if i had about one inch to it it becomes six and a half so on the average i'm going to be needing about six and a half length on this side and then on this other side i'm also going to place this way and then let's see what I'm going to be needing on this other side. Let me turn it to inches. So this is also almost the same, six and a half also. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut out my six and a half inches for the two of them. After cutting, our next assignment is to try to make sure that we use our lighter to burn the edges so that it doesn't start freeing. Alright, let's try to position it right here. Now, it depends on the direction you want them to be. If you want it to be like this, of course, you can see that direction is different. It means you have to turn it over this way for them to have, you know, to be in the same direction. So what you can do is we are going to place this here. And I'm going to also place this right here. Just place right here and let both of them be together like this. Now, one important thing I need you to note is we need them, you know, to look this way. And then with what I have here, I am going to try to cut this side off like I'm going to hold it together like this since I already have the position I need. And I'm going to go ahead and like I want to slot it. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Now you can decide to actually create a pattern for this before you decide all of this. I'm doing this just because I know what to do. But I'm going to suggest that if you are doing this for the first time ensure that you do not just decide to cut like this get a plain sheet that has the same width place them together take those measurements we took place them together and then you can just you know cut through here to be able to know what exactly to do now for me this is one of the simplest kind of slippers you can make you know even as a beginner so i'm going to just open this up now you can see what it looks like at the center here 
so i'm going to also try to do the same thing on this now doing the same thing on the second one you might not have to leave it that way you can decide to just place this way you can see that the right side is facing the right side because as far as i'm concerned this is my right side since it's the side i'm using if you want to use this other part it becomes your right side as well so you place them on top of themselves this way and then um, you position them very well so that it can perfectly align you can see the alignment so and i'm going to go ahead and slant that side as well so you can see what i've just done right there so you're going to do the same thing so it means the two of them are coming together right here so if the two of them are coming together what do we do you're going to place this way place the two of them this way you can see what it looks look look like now can you see so this particular strap is a strap of leather of course there are, are some already made belts that has this kind of size that is actually you know different colors as well that you can use as your strap if you don't want to use a genuine leather like i am using now this has a weight of about 1.5 centimeter so what am i going to do i am going to slip it over this way don't forget i want i want it to be equal so i want to make sure that it's equal here if I continue, okay, I think I'm good to go there. So I'm going to hold it down, hold the two of them down right here. Can you see me trying to centralize it? Then after that, I'm going to apply gum, of course, on those side, on this center, on the leather. Then I'm going to turn it over this way. And this is what I'm going to be having. So my pattern is outrightly ready like this. So let's apply our, con our, our gum. These are contact cement adhesive. I want to mark this side to know where to stop and where to begin. So for the leather. So I'm just going to do tip at the edges. At the edges. Back and front. Just please avoid stains. Avoid it exceeding, you know. So I'm just going to find somewhere to hang it up this way. I'm going to do the same thing here as and well. Apply as well here as well. Now you can see this. Ensure you don't exchange it and make it look this way. This is going to be definitely different from what we planned. So this is what we have. So I'll, I'm going to align it. Don't forget we already had a mark here. Can you see the mark? So I'm going to place this here and here. So... As an arrange the second one as well, just like I did to this one, then we can go ahead and then place this right here, align it, and let them align with themselves. So do some thorough armoring. You understand. Now, I'm going to suggest that you don't leave this one this way. Don't leave it that way. Try to ensure that um, you stitch this one so that it can enhance it and not pull off over time. So it's not advisable to use it like this. As far as I'm concerned, it's not. So if you have to stitch, make sure you just stitch. You can even and stitch. I've taught on how to and stitch. So you might have to check out that video. If you don't know what the video is, you can just let me know in the comment section. Just ask, oh, the video on and stitching. Please comment properly so that I will know what you want. The video on how to and stitch. So I will just um just um, tag you with the link so that you can watch. You can see this is looking very perfectly fine and okay. All right, so we are just going to go ahead and um, measure our five, five centimeters from this edge. Not so many people have asked me, am I supposed to use this for all sizes? Five by five is what I'm going to be using because the size is about 37. It's actually a male self -bar. so it's 37. So I am going to be punching it at that spot. Now, if you are creating anything like a ring toe, this is the same process. It's five by 3.5 for any size from, I would say size 37 upwards you can use that now for men probably who might have a wider feet or i mean adults with a wider um toe 
you might have to you might need to extend it to about um, 4.5 and this to 5.5 and please don't forget that each time you increase this it affects the full length of the person because their feet is not going to exceed where this thing stops so you need to really be very careful before you go and increase this and then um, reduce the length or size of your footwear so from what i have here this is five i measured five and this is 3.5 i'm going to be inserting this into this place it looks quite small but i'm definitely going to increase it so this particular part this one will not go in perfectly well so i'm going to be making it bigger please whatever thing you want to do when you want to measure make sure you always measure upwards don't measure downward if you open downward you would reduce the length at the end of the day the footwear will not size the person so i see this happen to a lot of beginners after they have measured their five they want to insert you know like a strap like this they end up put instead of them to put it up like this they will put it down this will reduce the size of your footwear so please watch you have to always put upwards so i'm going to just use my punch to actually punch upward just for that part to to come in properly where you can see what i've just done it's a bit wider now and i'm going to stylishly insert it now you can learn to actually pencil this part this particular part just for it to you know easily enter in I'm just trying to trim this part so you can pencil it well enough to enter into this place so then you can use your plier to pull it out and if your hand can it's all fine now before we proceed i want us to know that this particular part needs to be sandpapered so before i put it let me quickly sandpaper this side i'm using a very rough sandpaper that's what i am using right here it's a very rough one what i have right here i'm going to use my shoe last to check what it looks like now so with what we have right here i'm going to be using my shoe last now you can use the child's feet as well and then i'm going to bring it right here of course you can see that the shoe last is longer but it has a very wide fit so you can see what i have with this i can duly position the back part which means i'm just going to go along with this line and punch about 1.2 centimeter away from this edge so i'm going to just pick you know directly here and do the same thing on this other side as well you understand so let me remove for us to see so you can see what those places look like so i'm just going to punch and place this on top of it and punch the other side and insert it into it so as you can see here i punch and punch and punch and i'm just going to open through now because of this thickness i'm just going to open once like just go through it this way i know some of us will want to pull from here to here please don't do that stop midway turn over like this to complete it that makes your work look more neater and then it prevents this side from you know exceeding because the knife can easily cut through and just exceed so we have it open we have it open and we are just going to go ahead and put this one right inside it all right it's time to apply our contact cement adhesive on all the sides as well as the tongue part as well so you allow it to dry then you go ahead and then do the lasting process just give it some armoring so that it can duly stay there i know some people use glue shoe glue for this purpose but i don't think so so for this you can see what i have contact cement adhesive is what i use for my you know bottoming that has to do with um, eva foam it bonds perfectly well when you want to button any sole to an eva foam use this particular contact segment adhesive it's called pop, pop, popularly a full stick i use brands such as oc high i use brands such as top bond those are the two major brands i normally use and when i don't see top bond i don't see oc high i use energy gun 
So those ones work perfectly well. Now, some people, I don't know if you have seen any kind of footwear that has a cuff front. You can see me trying to curve that front. So if you want to curve the front of your Marco designs, you can see what it looks like. <laughs> if you if you if you bend bend it at the point of bottoming, it will give you that curve shape at the toe tip. You understand? Even if it's at the at the heel part, you'd curve it. It will still be curved, and it will remain like that. It's just to show you this. Of course, I'm not going to be <laughs> leaving it curved. All right, you can see what we finally have. Of course, I decided not to add top heel because he's just going to be wearing it at home. I created it for my son. He has a very wide feet. Like seriously, wide feet. So thank you for joining me today in the month of September. In our weekend class, we are going to be learning how to create offers. I have been discussing how to create offer for those into school bag and lunch boxes because I know school will be resuming very soon, of course, in my area. So we are going to be explicitly discussing that in the weekend class for the month of September. How do I create an offer? What does offer do to my business? How does it increase my sales? How does it establish me as an authority in my line of business? So that's what we are going to be looking at. Of course, we can't do without cutting pattern. Like I always say, we must cut pattern is by force. All right, then I'm going to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching me today. Bye.